Hello and welcome to my talk. My name is Rastislav Sabo and today I'll be speaking about multi-cluster service deployments with operators and kube carrier. So before we start, let me introduce myself. I am a software engineer at Kubernetes, where I am working on Kubernetes Kubernetes platform and kube carrier open source projects. I am specialized on multi-cluster application management and multi-cluster networking. And in the past, I also contributed to several other, other open source projects such as Ligato.io, FDI or GoVPP, CONTVPP, CNI or SysRepo. So as the title of the talk suggests, it will be uh, about multi-cluster service deployments today. During the talk, I will go through different aspects of multi-cluster service deployments and I will also mention some community-driven open source projects related to them. We'll go through multi-cluster infrastructure management, then multi-cluster application management, and finally multi-cluster networking. At the end of the talk, I will also show a quick demo of multi-cluster application deployment with Cube Carrier and multi-cluster networking with Submariner. So before we go into any details, let me talk about the use cases for deploying applications across multiple clusters. One of the reasons uh, for doing that may be close user proximity. For example, we would like to serve users from different parts of the world without high latency. Another reason may be regional high availability, where we, where we may want to mi minimize the impact of regional outages. Another reason may be security and organizational separation. For instance, we may have to use dedicated clusters per each organization or organization unit. The next one may be data locality. For example, databases with sensitive data may be only available on, in on-premises clusters. And last but not least, uh, one of the biggest use cases is edge, edge computing, where we usually run many smaller clusters distributed across multiple locations uh, because of low latency requirements. So let's start our multi-cluster service deployment story with the necessary infrastructure for running and managing multiple clusters. For that, uh, each cloud provider usually provides their own solution. But if you want it uh, to automate operation of many clusters across multiple regions and different cloud providers, including on-premises infrastructure, and do that all via a single pane of glass or a single API endpoint, I really recommend you to take a look at the open source Kubernetes Kubernetes platform, which can easily do it for you. Okay, let's assume that we have our hundreds or thousands of clusters running. Now let's talk about distributing some workloads on them. The Kubernetes SIG multi-cluster provides two possible solutions for that. The older one is called KubeFed. Uh, it aims to solve much more than just multi-cluster application deployment. Uh, for instance, it also aims to solve scheduling, DNS policies, etc. It is widely used, but quite complex to use. The newer concept is called Work API. It is a simpler approach for deploying workloads to clusters. Uh, for instance, it does not cover cluster registrations or scheduling. But at this point, it is just the API definition without any implementation. It is based on the work custom resource definition, which can contain a list of resources that should be applied to a target cluster. On the right side of the slide, you can see how the work uh, API custom resource may look like. It refers to a specific cluster, and in the workload manifests section, it contains a config map. Both approaches share some common concepts. They contain a single source of truth from where the wor workload manifests are propagated into managed clusters, and a control loop which applies resources and tracks their status. Now we are getting to the Cube Carry project, which uh, we created in Kubernetes. It builds on similar concepts uh, as the previously mentioned solutions. There is one management cluster, which is our single source of truth. We call it a service hub. And there, is, there are multiple service clusters that can run application workloads. The difference is that uh, by design, it only works with Kubernetes operators. Uh, application operators run in the service clusters. Cube Carrier discovers their custom resource definitions and make them available for users in the service hub. And Cube Carrier then uh, propagates the custom resources from the service hub to service clusters to drive the operators running in them. Finally, Cube Carrier has built in multi-tenancy, 
so multiple service provider and multiple service consumer accounts are supported. The reason why we decided to use operators in KubeCarrier uh, to build our multi-cluster application management platform is that operators help us to automate full application lifecycle within the cluster. That includes deployment, upgrades, backups, etc. And at the scale of hundreds of or thousands of clusters, it is really necessary to have this automation in place. Managing individual Kubernetes resources for each application in every single cluster just cannot work at this scale. This picture illustrates how KubeK works from a high level. The service users interact only with the management cluster via Kubernetes APIs. Uh, they deploy custom resources derived from the original CRDs provided by application operators running in the service clusters. Keep Carrier then distributes uh, those custom resources across clusters, which drives the operators running in them. And operators in the service clusters deploy and manage the application instances based on the content of the custom resources deployed by KubeCarrier. This slide shows how multi-tenancy works uh, with KubeCarrier. As you can see, KubeCarrier supports multiple service provider and service consumer accounts, which are separated by namespaces. Also, users within each account get proper Kubernetes RBAC roles set up and assigned automatically. We have three personas illustrated on this picture. The platform operator uh, operates uh, the management cluster and manages the KubeCarrier installation itself, and also uh, manages the KubeCarrier accounts. The service provider manages service clusters, operators running in the service clusters, and registers the services or their custom resource definitions in the service hub. The service consumers uh, interact only with the management cluster where they request and manage their service instances. Okay, so now we have our hundreds or thousands of clusters running and we can automate the deployment of applications into them via our central service hub. Now let's talk about how the applications can talk to each other across uh, these clusters. The Kubernetes SIG multi-cluster uh, provides a solution for that as well, and that is called Multi-Cluster Services API. It extends the Kubernetes service concept across multiple clusters. In the provider cluster, services have to be explicitly exported uh, using a service export custom resource. The multi-cluster services implementation that propag then propagates uh, that service export into service imports in all clusters in the cluster set. And the exported service uh, will then become accessible from each cluster in the cluster set at the, at the DNS name, service name, dot service namespace, dot SVC, dot cluster set, dot local. An open source project which implements this API is called Submariner IO. I will use this project in my demo. Okay. Now I would like to show you a demo of multi-cluster application management with KubeCarrier combined with uh, multi-cluster networking with Submariner. The demo topology would be similar to the picture that I have already described. We'll have one management cluster uh, that we'll use as our service hub and three service clusters where we'll be deploying our workloads. For the demo, we'll use the Redis database as our managed application. We will run Submariner across all four clusters to provide multi-cluster services connectivity. Okay, so what you can see here is the Kubernetes Kubernetes platform where I have created four clusters, each one at a different cloud provider in a different region. One of the clusters uh, I'll be using is a management cluster that will be our service hub through which we'll manage the deployment of applications into three service clusters. So let me go into the console in the top left corner, uh, you can see uh, the management cluster. And then we have three service clusters here, service cluster one, two, and three. The cube carrier has been already installed in the management cluster and the service clusters have been registered in the cube carrier management cluster. Also, the submariner have been installed in each one of the clusters. Uh, so the multi-cluster services uh, should be working uh, when we'll need them. 
So let me start the demo with uh, showing you the Cube Carrier accounts that I have created. So we'll have three Cube Carrier accounts uh, in this demo. Uh, one of them will be the service provider account, and then we'll have two tenant accounts. So the service provider will provide a ready service to the tenants. In each one of the user clusters, um, in service clusters, I deployed uh, the Redis operator already. Uh, but so far, no Redis instances are uh, running in any of those clusters. Uh, at this point, we can uh, check uh, via kubectl get catalog entry that kube carrier has uh, already discovered uh, the custom resource definitions in the service clusters. So, uh, so in our catalog entry, list, we can see uh, Redis in cluster one, Redis in cluster two, and Redis in cluster three, which are ready uh, for, for using by our tenants. So at this point, uh, our tenants uh, can request an instance of uh, Redis in any of those uh, service clusters. And the way how they can do it is uh, by creating a custom resource uh, which is derived from the original Redis uh, custom resource definition. Uh, but the API version refers to a particular cluster and a particular service provider. So in this case, uh, by using this uh, custom resource, we'll, we'll deploy a Redis instance in service cluster one. And the spec of, the, of this custom resource contains uh, some, some uh, information uh, needed to deploy a Redis instance, such as a uh, password for accessing the database that we'll use later. So uh, let me now use this uh, deployment YAML file and deploy a Redis instance in the service cluster one as a tenant A uh, to make uh, to make sure that we can see what happens, I'll run a watch commands here in the service clusters one, two, and three. Uh, they'll be watching for all pods and uh, we are grabbing the, the name Redis in, in across all the pods. So I'll now go ahead and fire uh, this command. Uh, so again, we'll apply this uh, custom resource, uh, which refers to cluster one uh under tenant a uh, and that will create a an redis instance for our tenant so soon we should be able to see that the redis instance has been deployed for tenant a in the service cluster one similarly we can we can request a redis instance for the for the tenant b so using the same uh, custom resource uh, under tenant b uh, user uh, we can request a Redis instance for the tenant B. And as you can see, it has been just started. And very similarly, we can also deploy some Redis instance uh, in, in the service cluster too. So the deployment manifest would look uh, exactly same apart from the uh, API version where we refer to uh, service cluster two. So let me deploy that one as well. And we should see in the service cluster two that our uh, Redis instance has been started. Okay, at this point, we have three Redis instances running in two different clusters. Uh, now let's try to connect to those Redis instances uh, from a different cluster. So in the cluster three, uh, we are not running any Redis instance. Uh, and uh, Potentially, we could we could try to connect to those Redis instances from this cluster. So, in order to do that, uh, we can re, uh, rely on multi-cluster services uh, API, which is uh, which is implemented uh, by Submariner, which is already installed in our clusters. And so, in order to export the service to a different cluster. Uh, we should first review uh, what are the existing services of our Redis instances. So as we can see, we have a Redis instance uh, service in the tenant A namespace, which is of uh, type cluster IP. 
And similarly, we have a Redis instance uh, service uh, in the tenant B namespace, which is of cluster IP type. So in order to export them uh, to other clusters in our cluster uh, federation, I would use the command subctl export service. Uh, subctl is a binary provided by Submariner, uh, but essentially what it does is that it uh, deploys a service export custom resource uh, with the name, uh, with the service name Redis instance uh, and, and the namespace uh, as, uh, as, as given here. Uh, similarly, we can also export uh, the other service instance uh, in the tenant B namespace. And at this point, uh, we should be able to verify that uh, service export exports have been uh, properly created uh, by showing kubectl get service exports. And yes, as you can see, our uh, Redis instances in tenant A and tenant B namespaces have been uh, exported. Uh, similarly, we can do uh, service export in the cluster 2 uh, for the Redis instance running in there. And again, we can uh, verify that uh, that uh, service export custom resources have been properly created in this cluster. At this point, in the cluster 3, we should be able to see uh, the service imports automatically created from the exported uh, services in cluster one and cluster two. And as you can see, uh, kubectl get service imports uh, gives us uh, uh, three service imports, uh, two in cluster one and one in cluster two. So now we should be able to access any of those three uh, services from this cluster. So let me exit into a client pod running in this cluster and the way how we can uh, connect to those services is using uh, DNS names uh, that refer to original service name, original namespace, uh, dot service, uh, dot cluster set, dot local. So this uh, domain name should uh, we should be able to resolve right now. And it seems that resolving works. So we can go ahead and try connecting to the Redis instance uh, with the Redis CLI uh, tool. Uh, we are just referring to the exactly same uh, domain name and we are using the password uh, that we specified in our uh, Redis custom resource uh, up here. So this should work and if it works, we should be able to run a ping command and we should get the pong from the server. Right. Uh, Exactly same way we can we can also verify the connectivity to the Redis instance in, in the cluster too. So it should just work uh, as for the Redis instances in the cluster one. Okay, that was it for the demo and for my talk as well. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me at this email address or via Slack right after the session. And thank you for watching my talk.